Greetings, this is Professor Wolf again, and uh, we're going to start, this will probably be one of the first videos in our Computer Programming 1 course. And as I've mentioned in class, really the important part of programming is not the syntax of the particular language, which eventually will be Java, but rather the logic behind the program. So what we have to learn to do, and we need to do well, is to take a task and break it down into logical steps that allow us to complete it. And one of the problems we have is when we can't do that, then we have a huge task that we don't know what to do and it's very difficult to address. So what I'm going to do today is first I'm going to introduce uh, some extensions to our pseudocode that we're going to do in week two. And uh, I'm going to work through a problem with you. Uh, and we'll write a logic program. So we're going to write our program in lot and pseudocode. Uh, we probably won't mess around with the flow charting much more. Uh, it's mainly you need to know how to read that. It's not a real useful tool uh, once you get uh, to do anything complicated. It's just sort of clumsy. What it is really good for is showing you high level patterns, uh, structural patterns, and uh, initially when you're learning syntactic patterns so when we learn the if then else it uh, really helps to see it for some people to see the flow chart and show how the branching works similarly with the looping that we'll do later so I'll actually use the flow charts myself to show you some of these structures but as far as writing our programs we will use the pseudocode alright so here's the extensions to our pseudocode and basically uh, what happens here is this main becomes the uh, what used to be start and return becomes the stop and then uh, what we've added is we have a class which is kind of a container so we have the class and end class and that forms a container and our entire program is in a single method called main and main has an end which is called a return very quickly when we get into the Java you'll see that this matches the Java model so in Java we have two kinds of classes uh, what we call object classes and then the main class and every program has to have at least one main class so this is the model for a Java main class and we're going to use it in our pseudocode and again what we did previously this main represents the start and this return represents the stop and then all the code is going to go here and again this is a comment that I had in the code block okay uh, the class name is always capitalized and then any subsequent uh, words are capitalized so that's not camel case so class names are always capitalized everything else our variables are camel cased where the first letter is lowercase and then all the subsequent words are capitalized. All right, so here's our first program that we're going to write. And basically, we want to create a calculator that calculates the total cost for a conference banquet. So we know that it costs $25 a head for each attendee. And then our program should calculate what the total cost is given the number of attendees. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, WordPad to write my code out here and uh, one of the reasons I'm doing that is just so you'll be able to see it well in the video. I'm going to leave this open in case I need to come back and refer to it. Okay. I probably won't though. Alright, so let me go to my WordPad file and uh, sorry to take you through all these screens there we go so uh, you can see here that I've just copied my uh, basic template here for my pseudocode program and now we're going to start writing it so the first thing we need is we have to figure out a name and uh, in this case it's going to be banquet cost so that sounds like a good name so bang quit cost and maybe I'll call it banquet cost calculator okay and so that's my name and then uh, as I mentioned in class we want to go ahead and figure out what variables we're going to need and so one variable I'm going to need for sure based on my uh, problem 
is the number of attendees, okay? Now, what kind of variable is that? That's not a string, that's actually a number. And so in our pseudocode now, we're adding typing. And so again, and notice how I indent everything. So everything in a block is indented. So this first variable is type num. And then the name of the variable will be in camel case, and it's going to be uh, num attendees. OK? We might be able to come up with a better variable name. But that's probably good enough. And, uh, and, and it's kind of interesting, although you don't usually do this, but the word num there also kind of tells me that it's a numeric variable in the name. Now, you don't need to do that routinely. A lot of times for context, that's fine. Uh, another alternative here would be uh, 10D count. Okay, so, and if I wanted to, I could add a little comment here to explain what that variable holds. So, number of attendees. Okay, does that sound good? Excellent. All right, so uh, what else are we going to need? So uh, we need to know how much it costs uh, for each attendee. And that's a fixed number that's not going to ever change. So that is a num, but that's actually a constant. And so when we do constants, we uh, do them as all uppercase letters. So that's going to be uh, num cost underscore per head and then we'll set that because that will never change and uh, I'm going to although it's twenty-five dollars I'm not going to put the dollar sign in so we'll just say twenty-five okay because we don't use the dollar sign in our Java or any of our code so the dollar sign obviously indicates that it's in dollars if I wanted to I could put that over here but again it's pretty clear from the, the problem you know what it is. Okay, uh, let's go ahead now and uh, talk about the logic of this. So uh, basically, what I need is I need this input, which is the attendee counts. That means I have to prompt the user. And we've kind of talked about this before that almost all programs fall into this pattern of input. processing and output, right? So basically here for the input, I'll have to uh, prompt the user. So output, whoops, there we go. Enter number of attendees. And then we'll input and then the name of my variable here is attend d count, right? So now I've got my input. Okay, let's think about our processing now. So the total cost is going to be the number of attendees times the cost per head, right? So how many heads do I have times the cost per head? So basically, uh, oh, and you know what? Now I realize I forgot a variable. So I need a variable to hold my result. Uh, what type is that going to be? That's clearly going to be a number. And so let's go ahead and uh, put that up here. So num total cost. And then again, I could put a little comment, total cost for banquet, which is what I'm trying to calculate. Okay? Okay. So, you know, that's kind of interesting. As I was doing my analysis, I forgot a variable that I needed. I could have declared that in line, but let's get in the habit of putting all the variable declarations at the top of the block. It makes the code easier to read for somebody who didn't write it. When they go back and read it, they can see what variables that it's using. And in this case, we've added comments. So even though we're using clear variable names, and you could probably figure out the meaning of the program by reading it, we've added comments to make it even clearer. So that's always good practice. Okay. 
Now, normally, once we start writing our code, we're not going to have this input, processing, output stuff. Uh, but we might have equivalent. So I could just say, get, oh, whoops, damn it, a mouse moved on me again. Uh, get total attendees from user, right? Okay, and then instead of processing, we'd say calculate the, so, you know, total cost. So really, you know, input, processing, and output is general, and I'm going to have the more specific comment here, you know, display results. Okay? All right, so calculate the total cost. So that's going to be total cost equals the cost per head. times attendee count. Okay, now that word wrapped on me here and uh, don't worry about that, but I'm going to tidy that up a little bit uh, so the code is more readable because that screws up my indentation. So I'm just going to move this like this, okay? All right, uh, then we display the results. Obviously, uh, that's our output statement. So, whoops, let me go ahead and make that bold, just since everything else is. And then this is going to be total, whoops, sorry, total costs. And uh, if you wanted to make this real pretty, you could say total cost for, and then include the number of attendees. Um, <clears throat> let's do it this way. So we're going to say, and, and the idea here is we're echoing the input. So this is a way to confirm to the user that the input they gave us is correct. So total attendees. attendee count. See what that'll do? That'll print the attendee count out and, and echo it for the user. And then uh, I'll do another output with the results. So output total cost plus total cost. Okay, so there's our program. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to have to think about how I'm doing this. I don't like this uh, really cons the constraint of the width here. I might try typing this up in Dreamweaver for you. Uh, I don't want to use the Java ID because it'll give me a lot of false messages about errors here. So again, the idea here, and I could just have easily written this out on paper. So these logic programs are designed to teach us the concepts of how to do the programming and how to get the logic right. And they're going to, you know, you got to keep working on these and practicing. So what you have to do is you have to learn to take a task, break it down into these little, small, chewable, doable chunks. And uh, right now the programs we're writing are so simple that you can really write the entire program and then run it. But real quickly, you want to get to the point where you can just do part of the program. Oh, pardon me. Do part of the program, test it, and then continue. So the worst thing in the world is to write three or four hours of code and then hit the compiler and hope that it runs, right? And it usually doesn't, and you spend a bunch of time uh, fixing the mistakes. It actually will go a lot faster if you... Um, you know, can uh, work incrementally like I described. Let me move this over here and see if I can get that word wrapping. It just bugs the crap out of me there. Come on. Oh, it just doesn't want to go. Okay. I'll just put it like that. There we go. So uh, I want you to get in the habit of doing this indentation. So notice the class block, everything there is indented from the main to the return. And then within the main, everything is indented. 
If I had an if block within here, that would also be indented. That makes the code much more readable. And, uh, you know, there's no problem with having multiple blank lines. Uh, these lines are actually spaced because I'm using WordPad more than I would in an editor. So usually they'd have single spacing and then I'd add the white space in. So for instance, I might put white space here before the this block and here and here just to make it readable. So anything you can do to make it readable is good. Uh, anytime I have an operator, I always put a space on either side. Okay, so I mean you can definitely do this and the compiler is okay with it, but it makes the code hard to read. So always put a space on either operator like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good for our first program here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video and let's see how much